Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch What Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the app today. This episode is sponsored by Audible. Audible lets you enjoy all your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or something new to discover. That's because Audible is the home of storytelling. You'll discover thousands of podcasts from popular favorites to exclusive new series, guided wellness programs, theatrical performances, comedy, and exclusive Audible originals from top celebrities, renowned experts, and exciting new voices in audio. The Audible app makes it easy to listen anytime, anywhere. While traveling, working out, walking, doing chores, you decide. Plus, new members can try Audible free for 30 days. Visit audible.com slash WonderyPod or text WonderyPod to 500-500. That's audible.com slash WonderyPod or text WonderyPod to 500-500. Hey, y'all, it's your girl, Kiki Palmer. I'm an actress, singer, and entrepreneur. On my new podcast, Baby, This is Kiki Palmer, I'm asking friends, family, and experts the questions that are in my head. Like, is only fans only bad? Where do memes come from? And where's Tom from MySpace? Listen to Baby, This is Kiki Palmer, only on Amazon Music. Well, hello and welcome to Watch What Crap Ends, the podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on the old profs. I'm Ronnie. Guess who I'm with? It's Ben. So cute little guy over there. Hi, Ben. What's good today? Hi, Ronnie. Oh, everything is good. It's the weekend. We're facing the weekend. So everything is better than yeah. it could ever possibly be. You Face know? It's the weekend. It's the weekend. And, um, we're recording this uh, ahead of time of this, but by the time this is released, I will have appeared on That's a Gay Ass Podcast with Eric Williams. He's doing a live, his very first own live show at, at Genghis Cohen in LA. And I, and I was very privileged and lucky to be a guest on his show. So thank you so much, Eric, for having me. And everyone go listen to his show. Yeah, it's so cool. I love that guy. I'm so jealous I can't be there to go see you. And at I Genghis know. Cohen. And congrats on selling out. Buddy, yeah, it's like you sold that uh, one out. Yeah, and by the way, and speaking of of live shows, our live shows are now all fully on sale. The pre-sale is over. Now it's general on sale. And in case you missed the big news, we are we have added Boston. We're going back to the Wilbur, and we're going to Foxwoods Resort and Casino, our very first casino show, which I am like deeply excited about because uh what. Foxwoods was one of the very first casinos I ever went to in my life. And I remember having the best time there. I remember there was a Wheel of Fortune and I thought I was really smart. The Wheel of Fortune is basically like, it's kind of like a roulette thing. And I was like, what if I bet a dollar on every single value, every single number, one of them's got a hit and then I'm going to make a lot of money. And so I put a a dollar on literally every, every number. And then I got like the lowest value number and I basically lost all my money. <laughs> and that's when I learned about the joys of casinos. Oh, yeah. They'll screw you. That's, that's what's fun. I can't wait to go. I can't wait. Craps, baby. It's so fun. Yeah. And I like so to see, see it. Like, I like to see if God's like listening because you're like, God, if you really love me. Because I learned how to pray around a craps table. My dad will, my dad's shameless. Like, he will pray at the craps table. He'll be like, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> heart eight lord heart eight you know it's like you're not supposed to do that i don't i don't i mean i think that's in the bible but he does it and um it's a good test to see if god loves you you're like i just need an eight lord. Just <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a good and authoritative test if god loves you uh, yeah. like basically you should you should you should basically pin your self-worth with god on how you do at a crap table <laughs> um i will say i'm just thinking about this ronnie that is going to be an amazing place to end our tour because, like, after party, right there in the casino, you know, do the show in, in, in the casino, and then, like, it, everything's there. It's going to oh, be amazing. Yeah. That'll be such a fun. We'll be up until, I don't know, how late does, is Fox was open all night long? Is it's that, a casino, is that it of course. It's a casino, it doesn't right? close. Yes, you go crazy. You know, so after party at the Penny Slots, guys, <laughs> if anyone needs us. <laughs> Penny, <laughs> I'm actually a roulette and craps guy. So sorry, or a poker oh. table guy where you go sit at the pokers with like the old hard locals, and they are. Well, we got to go to a craps table. to you. We got to go to a craps table. It's literally in our name. 
Okay. Yeah. Hello, crap and stable. <laughs> so yeah, that's where we're closing. But here is the list. We start on the second of February, so just a couple less than two weeks, which is terrifying. Yeah. Terrifying. Austin, Texas. We open in Austin at Emos. That's my hometown. Don't dis- don't disappoint me. Come to the show. Come on, everyone. Show up. I'm not saying you're not. I really don't know. I haven't checked. Um, but then we go to Dallas, Texas. Then we're Phoenix. Then Los Angeles for the 2023 Golden Crappies at the Wiltern Theater. It's huge for us. That is February 24th. Then we're on to Charlotte, Atlanta, Denver, Salt Lake City, Seattle, San Francisco, Toronto, Philadelphia, New York, New York, Washington, D.C., San Diego, St. Paul, Chicago, Columbus, Boston, Massachusetts at the Wilbur Theater, and then Mash and Tuck it, Connecticut at the Foxwoods Casino to close it all out. And I just want to say we've started to assemble our guests for the crappies, and I do not think you will be disappointed. This is, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. Yeah, it's fun and terrifying. That's all I'm saying right now. Talk about, great. talk about wanting to see if God's paying attention to you. <laughs> like, God. <laughs> God, please let Julia Roberts see this DM. <laughs> please, if you if you've ever loved me, please get Al Pacino this message. Well, maybe they'll be. I mean, who knows? I mean, we we might be able to shoot really big. It is Oscar season, and during Oscar season, those celebs will do any public appearance. So, you know, Jennifer Lawrence, give us a call if you're if you want to promote. Your, are are you Oscar now? Are you? Are you, do you have a movie that's Oscar nominated? She's been nominated so many times. Who gives a shit? She can come. She's, <laughs> she's she can all, come no matter what. Yeah, she's I'm just saying. I'm trying to. On it. Yeah, I'm she's trying to been sweeten the deal. A million damn times. There is no sweetening the deal. We're Michelle two jokers. Yeo. We're two jokers. Um, you know, who just fuck around all night. Come on, it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> but today we are here for Real Housewives of Me Jammy, and the episode is called Diamond Rings and Rumors. Mm. As crap is on demand too, so bonjour. Hi. We just posed for the camera. We just we just became two kids being like, "Is the camera that's on?" I know. Actually, I don't see most of these because I have to put my notes over the page because I will. St- I'm like Julia Fox on Watch What Happens Live. I just will sit here and stare at myself the whole time. Yeah. I'm like, oh my god, I look good from this angle. I look bad from this angle. <laughs> I, I do that too. I'm always adjusting angle, my posture. I look so I'm hot from this level, you know. Every time I look at myself, if you ever see my shoulders doing like a little shimmy, it's because I'm trying to like get them proper and fix my posture. But the other thing is, I have to usually cover the screen with my notes because otherwise, I try to get my eye line as up high as close to the camera as possible because otherwise i'm like looking down and it looks like i'm slightly disappointed throughout the entire episode <laughs> well Not. i think that that's a good way to come into a crappens recap always just slightly disappointed <laughs> you know i'm not disappointed today i got i love miami and uh you know every the show just is like literally every scene makes me happy oh my god i swear to god you know what i heard like literally it makes people happy as Larsa, literally? everything Larsa said, she's like, you know what, literally, like, I swear to God, like, this and that, swear to God, swear on my life, literally, yeah. this happened. Literally, literally, like, X, Y, and Z made me happy. And I noticed that Nicole's new thing is... <laughs> this and that, not, this and that. This and that, X, Y, and Z. But um, Nicole's new thing is that she's not saying malicious anymore, but she's saying honesty, honestly, a lot. Like, she's really upped her honestly game. She's like, honestly, like, I heard this and that, too. Like, honestly, that's what I heard. Like, honestly, my dad will show up, but, like, he better not bring his girlfriend. And, like, honestly, we're going to have a great party. Yeah, Nicole is really coming into her housewives self. Like, she's really getting down and petty now with the rest of them, which I think is funny. But yeah. <laughs> she does still seem like kind of such a visitor to me, to the whole thing, because she's like, oh, my God, I am doing the pettiest thing to Larsa. It's going to be so funny, honey. And her husband's <laughs> like, okay have your fun yeah. you know it's like she's trying out a new hobby like being an asshole on the real house right. well i think uh she's like a uh second half of the season bloomer because last season she was also kind of non-existent until halfway through when she started fighting with larsa so she's just sort of 
realize that she's on this show and needs to kick it up a notch, you know? And Marisol. Yeah, fighting with Larsa and Marisol. Oh, yeah, Marisol. Um, yeah. So uh, we are in the middle of a fight because we are at the Purse Charity event. <laughs> mm-hmm. The charity event at the Purse Store. And Nicole is like, oh, my God, isn't it, like, crazy, Larsa? Like, we've never actually, like, just, like, sat here and, like... Also, she has a major Kyle Richards Botox eye. Have you noticed that only one of Nicole's eyes blink half the time? <laughs> No, I haven't noticed that, but I'll keep an eye out on it. By the way, no Bueller's, like, digging in your pill- Bueller's digging Come in on. your pillows. Why are you going to be like that? You know, people He's- sit there. It's supposed to be nice furniture, darling. Right? <laughs> He's looking Go for a bone. There. Go there, over there. Go on. Go on. <laughs> and now he's acting like he never did anything. Yeah. Okay. Now he's hanging his head in shame. Okay, there you Good boy. He's, a- he's acting out. He's in, in competition with Baby Gorgeous, <laughs> your fish. He is. Uh, so they're having this uh, argument, and Nicole's like, isn't this nuts that we're, like, sitting together? Because, like, you know, like, we've never, like, actually even sat together and had a conversation. And Lars is like, you know what? Like, seriously, like, you literally, let me be honest, like, you said hurtful things to my face, like, you said, like, you have to know me to, like, bring me to your house, like, and guess what, like, swear to God, guess what I heard, like, swear to God, total truth, um, I heard you hooked up with every doctor in the hospital, like. (laughs) Yeah, so, uh, Nicole is like, what the hell, she goes, and did I ever mention it? Did I ever think about it? No, did I hear it? Yes, okay. This and that. You know this what I and heard? That. This and that about the hospital. This and that, swear to God. Yeah, Dr. This and Dr. That both said they hooked up with you. Okay? <laughs> they, they, they said, get me 10 cc's of XYZ. And Nicole's like, how dare Larza make a comment as if I'm doing anything inappropriate at work? I went to school for years to be a doctor and to take care of patients. And this comment is coming from a lady who sells her feet for $5 on the internet. And Larza's like, who are you to judge me? Someone not making $5 on someone's come over their feet. That's who she is. I mean, sorry, but you don't. It's like, listen, I'm all for the OnlyFans. If I had anything to put on OnlyFans, I would be on there. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's any shame with the game, but to try and bring down somebody's reputation and then say, who are you to judge me? She's literally a doctor. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) She literally had to study for years and spend hours and hours and hours in a residency so yeah yeah she, yeah. she can't judge you <laughs> she was on the front lines during covid so i think i'm gonna allow her to have a little bit of judgment and that is doctor judge to you ma'am doctor judgment doctor xyz this and that so then nicole's like um yeah but like this is what you do larsa because like you use these moments that get uncomfortable and then you pick some random fact that can't be substantiated and that could be detrimental to someone's reputation first of all don't say it's a fact you know what i mean yeah don't say random fact yeah you're working against yourself when you say that say random statement or random accusation but random fact is like that's a confirmation. Yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah, conf- confirmation. That and you know that Anthony's like, oh, no, why did she say that? <laughs> and Lars is like, yeah, but, like, you pick something to judge me, right? Like, you went online, right? <laughs> and Nicole's just shaking her head. And Larissa tells us, I was, like, mod-like boggled last year when Nicole said she didn't know who I was before I went to her home. Like, I've been friends with these girls for, like, a decade. Like, you know, I was married to a very popular basketball player. Yes, we know, Larza. That's all you fucking got, you know? She's like, well, maybe she didn't know me except for my famousness. Like, maybe my famousness made her feel fat or something. I don't know. Swear to God. Like, I don't even, I don't even know. I just love that Larsa is so thick-headed that she still can't parse the difference between knowing as in understanding who someone is and having heard about them and and read about them and like interface with them at like some party versus knowing 
like having a relationship, have understanding who they are as a person in real life. Like that, cause that's the crux of this. And Larsa keeps taking it, being very, very, very literal about this and then being angry about it. So well, she's the, also, she's also just had a party in her new home where the people that she knew were invited to the party in her home and the people that she didn't know that well and were just like casual friends were invited to the party room in the hotel or whatever the fuck she's living in. So the fact that she doesn't understand that some people are close enough that you have them into your home and some people are not, and you leave them in the fucking community center room in the hotel you're renting, you know? That's a great point. She uh, literally did the same thing. So the (laughs) producer says, um, was there something about Larsa that made you uncomfortable about inviting her into your home? And Nicole's like, I, well, like, honestly, I didn't know her, right? Like, I didn't know Larsa from a hole in the wall, okay? And the hole in the wall, honestly, had more personality. So all I knew was, like, the stuff in the media, like, that she was married to Scotty Pippen. But, like, I've never met her. So, like, why is it weird that I would, like, want to get to know somebody before I want to hang out with them, you know? Do you know Delicious. how many people only know Larsa as a hole in the wall? <laughs> I mean, just the just the turn of phrase, yeah. um, and uh, she's like, "Why is it so weird that like I would want to get to know somebody first before they come to my?" You were being an asshole, okay, Nicole. Like Larsa being an asshole doesn't mean that you weren't also being an asshole. No, in Nicole. That situation. Nicole I think is Nicole not being, is an being asshole. a fucking asshole, and she's not owning up to it. Instead, she's like trying to make it like what it's to- totally normal to like want to know somebody before they come to your home. She's a cast member of your show, and you were treating her like shit because she was an OnlyFans. You know, crazy. She's Larsa. Like I get it, but you know, don't pretend like you were. I was just being nice. But the- like, it was just reasonable. But the issue, but the issue was not that Nicole was having a party and decided not to invite Larsa because she didn't know Larsa. They were having a conversation in the Hamptons, and it was like a theoretical thing that came up. Um, I don't even remember the context of why she brought up like, well, I didn't like, I don't even know you. I, I like, w- like, I, I don't know if I'd invite you to my house or so- whatever it was. She still wound up inviting Larsa to her house and everything. So it's not like Larsa was snubbed for something. It was just in a conversation. She mentioned how when she first met Larsa, she didn't know Larsa. And she doesn't, I don't even remember the context. But ultimately, Larsa, as far as I remember, and of course, my memory is very shoddy at times. As far as I remember, Larsa was never snubbed from something at Nicole's house. Well, and I liked that she even made the point. She's like, she was at my party. Like, I don't even understand what she was at my house for dinner. And then we see her like really creepy um, appropriation dinner. I was like, oh, I don't know that they need to be showing this again. Um, so then um, Nicole is like, um, hey, Mary Soul, Mary Soul, come here. Mary Soul, do you invite strangers into your home? I'm like, yes, it's Mary Soul. Are you kidding? <laughs> she literally. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, person on the street, you want to have a cocky with me? Yes. You know, Mary Soul's that lady who gets a folding chair out right in front of her front gate. And it's just like, yeah, it's getting a little sun. How are you, sweetie? You going to school? Huh? How's that going? What grade are you in? Oh, yeah. business major. That's interesting. Come sit on my lap. Come on. She runs a, she runs a house of meh repute. So... <laughs> So then Lars was like, but I'm not a stranger when I've known everyone for a hundred years. And Nicole's like, but I don't know you. Like, to me, I've met you like one time before, honestly. And Lars was like, but is it weird for her to say to my face, I don't know you? And it's like, she's not saying she doesn't know who you, she's not saying like you just walked in and you're a complete stranger. She says, I don't like, I don't know you but like also that, you know? why would nicole call mary soul over for help she knows mary soul hates her and is yeah. just waiting to get revenge you, you cannot ever call alexia or mary soul to help you it's not gonna work and she does it twice in this episode so she she's needed like, a life raft it was just marisol was floating by she was the door in titanic and she needed to climb on it she's like i guess this will have to do yeah it won't be great we're not all gonna survive but i'll at least get on this thing Mary Soul's like, I was shocked, honey. I mean, I was really shocked when you said that. I I couldn't believe that you said that. Could not believe it. And Nicole's like, well, I didn't intend it to be rude. And Larsa goes, you know what I feel about you, honestly? Like, can I be honest? Because, like, honestly, to tell the truth, like, you're, like, nice to people. You're, like, nice to everyone, to be honest. And Nicole's like, yeah, because I'm not an asshole. Just, yeah, but you're fake, like, so you're fake. That's that's it. Like, to be real, that's it. Honestly. Honestly. Yeah. 
Well, you know what? This is why we can never be friends because you just called me fake. You just called me fake. And Larsa goes, well, I'm willing to move forward, which is kind of funny because that's kind of the fakest thing. Like nothing's resolved, but she's like, let's move forward. And Nicole says, uh, I'm not going to move forward when you're like fake. When you're like, when you're like, you're fake. I'm not going to do that. And they keep doing this thing like it's the worst thing to say it in your face, right? Because Lars is like, I can't believe she like said she doesn't even know me in my face. <laughs> and now Nicole's like, oh my God, you just called me fake in my face. By the way, so. and meanwhile, Alexia is like talking to someone and she, she sees them talk. She sees them arguing and she goes, these girls keep fighting. Like, I can't. I can't. <laughs> like, Alexia saying that? <laughs> Um, so then, um, Lars is like, yeah, like how you are sometimes, like, let me be honest, like you just like flow. And so Nicole's like, you know, the things she accuses people of, she does herself. Like I'm aggressive, but she's the aggressor or like, she says I'm fake, but like, there's a lot fake about you. Like everything she says about people or her own issues. And then she deflects on herself. I'm like, yeah, it's called being a real housewife. Have you even watched this show before? Welcome. Yeah. Welcome, yeah, welcome to the channel. <laughs> and then it just cuts to a lady playing the violin like. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. The show is literally deflecting away to a lady on a violin. <laughs> like everything deflects on this show. But I love so, how like TV violinists play because it's just like so into it. It's like you're playing it a purse story, you know, but she's like. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she's like bleeding out of the eyes. Like. Oh. <laughs> She's hoping she'll be discovered and put on the Oscars. <laughs> so, um, like great, uh, now great Frere Jaca. Let me not take away <laughs> from that, but could you move away from the crossbody? I'd love to check that out. Thanks. Yeah, let's settle down there, Yitzhak Perlman. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> it's not yo Perlman. yo in my way. Okay, <laughs> yo yo oh yo yo in my. <laughs> more of a cellist but that's fine <laughs> that's it. Um, i'm just going for anything i can get right now okay. settle down viola davis <laughs> <laughs> settle down over violin there. manuel miranda settle down over there a bow bridges <laughs> <laughs> settle down over there <laughs> Holly Hunter. Sorry, that has nothing to do with anything. I just watched. I've been watching Succession, and she she showed up. Uh, hey, uh, congrats on your new <laughs> sitcom, um, Dan Clarinet. But uh, I'm trying to get <laughs> trying hey. to shop here. <laughs> hey, quiet down, Timpani Amber Thiessen. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, by the way, you saw that Night Court's coming back, Dan Larroquette's John Larroquette. I said Dan uh, yes, Larroquette. I did. Damn, I kind of suck at this. John Larroquette is coming back to Night Court. Who knew? There it is, everybody. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> I think on this very channel, on Peacock. I'm, yeah, I, it's, it was on NBC, too. I, they did a big push over the weekend, and I'm just I'm not fully sold on Melissa Roush as the new judge. I'm sorry. I've seen the commercials. I'm not sold. But I'm sold on John Larroquette. And... Um, you know, good. Good. I'm glad the show's back yeah. for those who want to watch it. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a crappens commercial. It's hard to stick with working out. Oh, my God. Don't we know about that? I mean, we try and then we fall off and then we try it again. But you know what? With Peloton, here's something I'm not sure you realize. Peloton is more than just a bike. You probably know that Peloton makes bikes. But did you know they also make treadmills, Ronnie? Yeah, and you know, treadmills are not all the same because the Peloton tread can adjust your speed at incline automatically while you're taking a class so you never break your stride. Yeah, they've got great instructors. The Peloton tread instructors have a variety of different training backgrounds and styles of motivation that work for runners and walkers of all levels. And you can work out when it works for you because Peloton offers thousands of on-demand classes and they're available 24-7. That means you can work out whenever and wherever is convenient for you. Yeah, and there's like so much power in mixing it up because nothing gets you moving like the perfect song. I mean, don't I know that? Peloton offers the best playlist with a variety of genres, whether you're looking for EDM, 90s pop, or something soulful. Peloton has music to fit your mood. And you don't have to be a super athlete to enjoy Peloton because there are classes for every level. 
So try Peloton Tread risk-free with a 30-day home trial. New members only, not available in remote locations. See additional terms at onepeloton.com slash home dash trial. Hey, I'm Arisha. And I'm Brooke. And we're the hosts of Wondery's podcast, Even the Rich, where we bring you absolutely true and absolutely shocking stories about the most famous families and biggest celebrities the world has ever seen. Our newest series is all about the incomparable diva, Whitney Houston. Whitney's voice defined a generation, and even after her death, her talent remains unmatched. But her incredible success hit a deeply private pain. In our series, Whitney Houston, Destiny of a Diva, we'll tell you how she hid her true self to make everyone around her happy, and how the pressure to be all things to all people led her down a dark path. Follow Even the Rich wherever you get your podcasts. You can listen ad-free on the Amazon Music or Wondery app. Then Lisa and Adriana are talking at another part of the party, and Lisa's like, how are you doing? I don't think I've ever heard you ask that before, so that's nice. You know, baby steps. And yeah. Adriana's like, oh, I got my BBL. You want to look at it? So she, like, spins around. And Lisa's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I can see. Uh, yeah, don't worry. It'll go down 30% in a little while. Yeah. Well, uh, I know you're going through a hard time, uh, and I feel sad for you, but uh, I need to tell you something. Uh, There's somebody big time in Miami who once told me you make him weak at the knees. She's just like, I don't get it. Who do we think Adriana is talking about? Who's big time in Miami? Is it Gloria Stefan's husband? Let's be honest. (laughs) I, I have no idea who this could be, but I cannot wait to find out. Because you know that Adriana will be messy and bring him around, you know? Yeah, the mayor and of Miami. so um, Lisa's like, um, really? I'm not even, like, in that headspace? Because, like, I'm thinking, like, what the fuck am I supposed to do now, you know? Because I have this man, a man that I loved, a man that I had no idea anything was wrong with, and he loved me, and I was a princess, and he was a prince, and now what? Now look at me, all alone, with nothing completely blindsided i was like do they even tell her that the scene has changed (laughs) she just comes in and does the same thing i know you're going through this in real time and i'm really sorry for you but i'm getting tired of your divorce storyline cut the cord (laughs) get it over with okay ronnie it's not just a divorce storyline it's a divorce and grocery storyline because she still has to buy that (laughs) strawberry jam or whatever Peanut butter and <laughs> the peanut butter avocados. and strawberries and shit. <laughs> she still hasn't gone to the store yet. Oh. So Lisa's like, clearly this man has lost it. I mean, treating me like I'm the enemy. Okay, I'm the one with the Trader Joe's loyalty card here. So <laughs> Alex, Alexa's like, okay, oh, well, you know, everyone gather around. So uh, she thanks everyone and she gives an, a really lovely speech about the Des Moines organization and talks about her journey with Frankie and, you know, we see some footage from 10 years ago of sweet Frankie as a kid in in recovery. And it's very, it was really nice to see how far he's come. And it is a nice reminder of really uh, like all the shit that, that Alexia had to deal with to sort of recover him. And, you know, like it was definitely an uphill journey. So that was really a nice, nice little moment there in the middle of all this madness. And then we get to see Peter, and he's not hitting a woman or filming himself punching a homeless guy. So, yeah. you know, good for you up guys. It's, it's yeah. going great over there for the most part. So then um, Frankie, like, is to pose for all of his pictures, and he's so cute. Yeah. They're like, Frankie, Frankie! They're pretending to be paparazzi everywhere. Yeah. So then uh, Mary Saul goes to hug Larsa by, and she's like, well, I'll see you at Nicole's engagement party. There's a bar there, right? I'm gonna be. I love cocky. I'm a drinker. I hope we can mix soon. Hmm. And Lars says, "Like she's." She, Lars says she's going to Nicole's party, but she goes, "I just feel like I can't be phony. Like I feel like someone's like a certain way. I'm just gonna like say it. Like you know, like if they're like a little bit of this and that, I can say they're like a little bit of this and that next XYZ. I can't, like, be phony. You're wearing a Kardashian face, and you've, like, ziplined an ass into you. What are you talking about? I don't even <laughs> recognize you. So then um, we go to... Ass. <laughs> I don't know what I'm the talking ass about. Was, the ass it's was a hanging week. on a zipline, and it just went <laughs> flying through the air and attached itself onto her butt. What was I trying to say? I think maybe mainlined or yeah, I don't injected. Know. I don't even but know. I like just... the idea of just an ass. Is, the ass is like, come and get me. Just, <laughs> I'm going to pretend it didn't helmet. happen. 
<laughs> so um, we go to Julia's. She's giving her goats t- treats, you know, and yeah. uh, she's giving them like that Trader Joe's dried fruit. She's spoiling her goats. And then she starts getting afraid because they are following her really aggressively now. And that's why you don't go into a giant goat pen and start handing out Trader Joe's treats. Okay. I know. Do you really do this? Because I'm starting to get the feeling that she's like fake farmer. Because you know those people who are like, I have farm, and you're like, Ugh. you have like two chickens, and you know, I've already said all this. What do I well, feel no, like no, no. Last week, your take on it was like, wow, she's like a legit farmer. Like she's a farmer that actually like makes food. <laughs> and this week, chickens. suddenly, suddenly now, like you saw one donkey, and you're like, you know what? She's a fake farmer. <laughs> Because there was like a donkey in the mix there. I don't know if you noticed, but I was like, I think it's a donkey. It was not a pony. She would not have a pony. She would have a donkey. But there well, definitely was like a week, little donkey. She had like a whole, I think like I saw the Netflix special about her chicken farm. I mean, there were like hundreds of chickens, you know? There were and so I was chickens. like, she's really serious about selling those eggs or whatever. But she doesn't know certain things. Like you don't drag around a goat on a leash and be dazzled overalls. Like generally that's frowned upon. Mm. Or, you know, like taking actual food into really hungry animals that could knock you down and will knock you down, you know? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm not buying it today. We'll see next Yeah, today week. the farm, on the farm stock market, and uh, <laughs> we're in the stock market is just, is merely just, it's not market value, yeah. it's just Ronnie's, you know, fondness for your farm. Yeah, right today now, you're full of shit. Is sinking. Yeah. <laughs> it's low on the on the Ronnie farm market. Yeah. So um then we see Lisa with her kids, and the kids, I guess, were afraid of ghosts and monsters in the room. So she's like, All right, kids, let's go into your room. We gotta find the monsters and get rid of them. So the kid takes like a toy grenade and throws it in the room and blows them up. And I was like, Whoa. <laughs> this kid is I mean, they're like he's playing like Call of Duty, throwing grenades in the room, and he's Dude, like five years old. I was like, not oh. only that, this kid. I mean, listen, just read the news in America in the past two decades. It's not good to have your kid in full army gear. I mean, he's got, like, full-on, like, gear. He's got, like, a little a little bulletproof vest and, like, sunglasses and, like, a little green beret and, like, you know, uh, what's that I'm stuff? Like, Camouflage and shit and then, like, <laughs> little toy grenades. Could we, like, maybe just do crayons and draw little things? I don't know. <laughs> Listen, I'm not a, I'm not a parent. I don't really know how to parent. I give a lot of advice about something I don't know about. But I don't know, like, what about, like, a nature walk? What about tying your child up and throwing it into a closet until it stops <laughs> obsessing over weaponry? <laughs> you don't even have to be a parent to say, you know, in America, it might not be a great idea to have your kids running around in full army gear throwing grenades. Yeah. Why don't you, how about okay. this? Take, take, why don't you take your kid to a museum? How about that? <laughs> not that museums don't have a lot of violence depicted there, but it's like oil painting violence, which doesn't feel as violent. Jesus. So, so just put your kid in a waking coma, feed it through a straw until it's old enough to be past all this bullshit. That's what I say. Play classical music while he's under. Yeah, teaching the violin, and then maybe he can be playing at a cocktail party. <laughs> then he can be making yo yo ma jokes at Perso. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So um, then we go to Gertie and Russell. Speaking of kids, now Gertie and Russell have decided that they're going to do family game night with the kids because last week it was like, well, you hang out with the kids all the time. And like, I don't see the kids at, at all because like, I'm not into Star Wars. So like, I'm just going to go do something else. And I, ah! So now Gertie is going to make up for lost time by having family game night with two very unenthusiastic teenagers. These kids are so pissed. And so is Gertie. She's holding a big one. She goes, okay, we're going to get family night started. <sighs> <laughs> so they go to the right, living we're room. Charades. charades. No, they call this charades. This is not charades it's, it's at all. Not. But it's, um, not. it's that game heads where up. you get an okay heads up where you, there's a clue on the iPad and you put it on your forehead so you can't see it, but everyone else is telling you what you're holding over your forehead. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And you can tell they're not a family because, again, this is not charades. <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, um, it's uh, yeah. So they start playing it, and um, you know, she's basically Gertie's saying how she just wants to spend more time with the boys, and Haitian culture is all about discipline before love, but she wants to change and everything. So they're playing, and Gertie plays heads up 
pretty much the way you'd expect, which is that like when Russell is doing it, it says like high school musical. It's like, ah, uh, okay, all right. It's like a scroll. It's like it's a thing. It's a place where, uh, you know, I could go in there probably with an estimate of like maybe about like ten thousand dollars, but I'd mark it down to like two hundred dollars because it's not average person. And we could put Milo on the walls. We could have a prom. Uh, we could put set of pieces on the table. They're like high school. Yes, exactly. High school. All right, perfect. <laughs> And, you know, you really do tell how a family bonds with, when they play games like this. You know, like when you play with your own family. Like me and my mom can always get each other. Um, but no one else really can get us at all. And that's how this is. Because it's Gertie's and she has, like, High School Musical. Then she's like, um, it's not big, but it's like the fish girl. She combs her hair with a fork. She sings a song. I guess she's pretty. It's going to be released again. Like, ah, ah, big fat octopus really mean to people. Um, and they're like what but then russell gets a, it's a little mermaid duh but then russell gets up there and he's like like jar jar binks blah darth vader blah the republic yeah, the kids, i mean the, the he doesn't the even have to do clues. anything yeah he, <laughs> the kids give him the smallest clues about star wars they're like mm -hmm. boop. oh he's like oh yeah uh lubiblar whatever or commander blurg or or carbonite or something like they just like get all these star wars references and gertie's like uh what, what's going on uh. so um they all end up cracking up because one of the manu her um assistant is there now playing with them and the clue is on gertie's forehead and it says horrible bosses and manu's like this is one you should know and the kids start cracking up yeah and Curtis like, you better tell me what it is. <laughs> so they're all laughing. <laughs> now we go to uh, Julia. Is Now Julia goes to a restaurant with um, her personal friend and stylist, LaSalle. Um, because LaSalle, ha he and his husband have two children that they've adopted. So she wants to get some input from him. And um, Julia's saying, she starts talking about, uh, she's like, yesterday I talked to Augie. And I have potential all-American brand for e-com. What is ecom? I don't want to sound stupid, so I just said yes. But what is ecom? He's like e-commerce. She's like, oh, is that where I sell pickles? Yeah, uh, yeah. He's like, uh, it means it's all online. Oh, nobody like waiting in line. Oh well, you know, you work your way up in future. <laughs> so we're we're talking because um, he has two children he and his husband adopted, and I wanted to talk to him about me and Martina adopting. And then the waitress comes over. She's like, "Hey there, welcome." I was like, "Where'd they get this chick?" <laughs> and Julie goes, "I will have plain Jane." And she goes, "That's a burger. You want onions?" <laughs> I have a question. Could there are fish that they make there? Could you let the chef know? That 15 years ago, I made very good fish. Okay, I made very good fish 15 years ago. <laughs> oh, God, are you the idiot who tried to ship a fucking dresser over here? My friend Tommy worked for that company. Still <laughs> talks about it. <laughs> so um, LaSalle is trying to explain to her that adoption's difficult, you know, and that there, and it, and it is. It's like notoriously difficult. Yeah. to adopt a kid and he's saying there are so many steps that you have to take you know at one stage they come to your house which one farm or city i prefer farm martina city so if they want me farm martina city he's like no no they it's like they're coming to do a check to make sure that this kid is going to be okay in the house oh it's okay we plug outlet with fork no <laughs> like what do you do around Goat. Baby <laughs> baby raised by Nanny Goat. It is the way. And what are you going to serve this child uh for your for the meals? Dry fish and pickle. <laughs> pickle. <laughs> and when the baby has too much vodka, pickle. Every time. <laughs> Olive oil, pickle, dried fish, but I could do fish very well. I can do it. <laughs> Yeah, and he's like, um, let's just put it this way. It's a journey, and you guys are going to make it. You're paying for this dinner, right? Because I'm not going to yeah. pay to have to sit through this shit. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think the the thing that's going to be tough for Julia is I think that the, the adoption people are 
They will be invasive because I feel like they're not going to want to leave. I think they're going to be in that house. They're just going to want to be like, oh my God, we're in Martina's house. Let's just like draw this out and like see if we can become friends with Martina. Could you imagine? Like we have to do another interview with you guys. And it is unfortunately on the same night as the Glee reruns on Peacock. (laughs) Is that going to be okay? (laughs) Maybe we should just like watch them all together. I don't know. (laughs) Guys, um, all the office needs to interview you. Sorry, it's Super Bowl Sunday. <laughs> it's going to work, okay? <laughs> hey, they were saying that in order to adopt a baby, we have to see if you're a good tennis player. So maybe we should all play tennis together and like maybe take a photo as a group. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, they're just never leaving. But then she wouldn't even need to adopt any kids. She'll be like, I have no family now. Adoption agents. She adopts so the adoption nice. agents. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of favor. So then we go to Larza. Larza, don't guys, don't ever forget it. I'm a, I'm, I'm all of this first, but second, I'm a mom. Honestly, like, so we see Larza in one of her like good mom scenes where <laughs> she's like, Preston. Did you make these cookies? It's a rock. Like, you have to make it again. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, Preston, I guess, made cookies that went stale right away, which means, that means they were probably overcooked to begin with. But, um, yeah, Lara says doing her quote-unquote mom scene, wherein she has a cutting board of very, very neatly sliced veggies. I'm going to say that she bought some pre-sliced veggies. She did right? not slice this shit. That girl that she's always having over to try and make a friend. Zara, of. Zana. Yes, that mm-hmm. girl sliced all that. Lars didn't slice all that. Shit. Yeah, there's, like, there's yeah. no mess in this kitchen. This is not a kitchen that is. It, there, no one is cooking in this kitchen at this moment because we know what a kitchen looks like when you're cooking in it. There's yeah. at least a few things. There's like a spoon somewhere. There's olive oil. It is not pristine, and then the cutting board of perfectly sliced veggies. But this is also just. I mean, Lars is like, I'm so, I totally cook for my family. And it's just such a lie. I mean, just how she does it. She so it's a pre cut plate of veggies and she just throws them all on a pan and then throws a, ch- a chicken breast in there. Like, that's not yeah. how that works. Just like, who here wants sad veggies and chicken breasts? I mean, uh, <laughs> these poor kids. That is poor kids. That's like, <laughs> that's yeah. Like, that is. Chicken breast and and pre sliced veggies. I mean, there's actually but nothing you know wrong with pre sliced veggie. It's just more like how thin people boring. eat. Maybe I was just like, maybe no, that's I was how thin, thin people food. eat. Yeah, it's thin food. But like, you don't even do the onions and peppers first. Like, you just throw everything in at the same. I know. Time. That's the thing. But that's why I'm saying it's so sad because it's one thing for her to eat the thin food because that's like the lifestyle she's adopting. But to force it on her poor son, who's sitting there making cookies, he's he's trying. She probably iced those cookies that way they'd be hard so that way you'd have to throw them out oh well have to throw out the fun food yeah those are her toy cookies to look like a normal person um so she tells us scotty jr is gearing up for nba draft honestly like dustin's in europe and to be truthful about it like sophia's in miami with me like they're just like so unique and like different and i just like love that they're like so unique (laughs) <laughs> yeah they all have different names it's so unique hey look scotty jr is on tv let's look oh look oh no now he's on hinge uh mom that's a basketball game yeah that's where you find people to date right it's mm-hmm. Hinge. so then gertie comes over and it's like oh hi gertie she's like oh my god i've been doing so good because i had this whole thing because after the thing that happened with lisa like it was so hard i had to say to my own husband do you want to be with me like are you still in love with me then we fucked at the beach like actually at the beach in the parking lot which was really funny but then we were playing something called charades but it's not something like charades it's something like it's on your forehead and everyone just points at you and calls you stupid and a horrible boss (laughs) i think it's better i think it's better oh my god why did you talk like that to nicole at the party what happened what happened girl what yeah, you know what I learned about that party? Do you know that they have, like, Bentleys when you go to the opera? What? Yeah, they literally have Bentleys that are designed for operas. You ever heard Phantom of the Opera? It's crazy. I learned this from this game. It's absurd. 
Well, I mean, at least you guys are communicating. And she's like, no, but like, I saw this thing at the party, like, is something uh, like you called her fake or something like that? Why would you do that? She's like, because like, get this, like, honestly, to be honest, like, she said, like, she needs to like, get to know me before like this or that, or like, I get to like, do this or that in her house. And like, that's hurtful to me, because I know things about you too, friend. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a Crappens commercial. <laughs> so then it cuts to Nicole and Anthony at a restaurant. And uh, Nicole's like, um, I've been like juicing all week to fit into like my tight and tiny dress for tomorrow. And he goes, so by juicing, that's drinking juice, right? You're not doing mm-hmm. steroids, right? And she goes, uh, Anthony, oh, oh my God. I have, okay, I've got to get into this dress. But what's more important is I have to flex on camera. I'll have the foie gras, please, and the caviar pasta um, on top of the lobster cocktail. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, because they're in the private dining room at Fiola. And um, she's like, yeah, you know, we're having this party, and it's, like, a big deal to us because, like, we like we don't care if we're married, but, like, we could be getting married, but, like, it's a big deal. And we have this lady, and, like, she's like, do you guys want, like, a party at, like, a 10? Or you could have, like, a party at, like, a 7? Or you could, like, maybe do, like, a party at a 3? And we always say 10 every time with a party. And then we cut to a week earlier, and this party planner is like, Okay, so we have a photo booth moment, and it's like this new machine. We also have this new machine. Like, you're going to be o- one of the only ones in Florida that have it. Okay, so, like, imagine, like, an, a helium stand, okay? and in- But instead of filling it with air, you're going to fill the balloons with al- an alcohol mist. So then you take, like, balloon shots. And I'm just like, this woman is conning you. She's getting a, a helium thing from Party City and saying it's the only <laughs> one in Florida. I gotta tell you that you're gonna feel high off of it and you're just gonna assume you feel high. Yeah. So Anthony asks if her dad is gonna be invited and she's like, yeah, but I said, listen, I wanna be abundant and clear. We want you to come to the engagement party, but like it's an invitation for one only. And he's like, okay, but like let's stay chill, even if he does bring the girlfriend. And she's like, yeah, well, I'm sorry, babe, but I can't get over Larsa. So she's not going to talk about the dad issue at all. So she's so yeah. excited to announce that she's finally becoming a truly petty real housewife. Yeah. Um, yeah, she's like, I couldn't like, I couldn't like react in the moment because like I was so caught off guard by by how ridiculous and malicious the comment was. But like the more I thought about it, like I was like, she's so ridiculous. Like what she said was hurtful. And I've worked so hard to, for her and for her to be so cavalier and reckless. And it's like, I know you want to say malicious. Ah, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. That's what I thought too. Like she was trying to, she was trying so hard not to say it. Yeah, I feel like maybe she listened to this podcast and was like, I'm not going to let them say malicious this year because I'm not going to say it just once. I'm, I'm not giving them malicious. No, so malicious she's like, this over. woman has no moral compass guiding her. And Anthony's like, well, she's got some gall because she'll say anything and not even, not you know, not even think about how it might implicate her. I mean, she doesn't look past literally her big fat butt. Literally. I was like, literally. Honestly, she has like zero respect for what I've accomplished because she has no idea what it is to work for something because everything she's done in her life has been on the backs of somebody else. And Anthony's like, oh, literally, <laughs> high five, high five, get it? I'm basically calling her a slut. High five, high five. All right. And it's like she has everything because of who she married. She just, she keeps her last name. Like, who does that? Anybody who has children with the person that they divorced, that's not abnormal. I, don't, I mean, have you I ever heard of Yolanda up. Hadid? Hello. Yeah. Except hello. for when she turned Foster, when <laughs> it was really cool to be married to David Foster. But then she went back to Hadid because, you know, the kids. Oh, the kids. You keep the most famous last name that you are allowed to keep. I mean, uh, I think that's very fair. I think you I should think keep so the, too. your most famous last name. She had four damn Pippin name. children, and she was with Scotty Pippin forever. Now, is she a monster? Of course. She's Larsa Pippin. But she's still, like, the woman gets what she gets, and she gets to keep the name Pippin if she Listen, damn well wants to, sir. She is a Pippin, and she can find her corner of the sky if she wants to. That's right. You know, that musical is annoying as fuck, but it still has the right to be performed. <laughs> 
we are just never going to go see it. Yeah. Because exactly. both of us dislike it. Actually, I only know that one song, but I hate that song. I had to sing it in ninth grade, and I hated I it can't. so much. Oh, that to Pippin. this day, the entire Ooh. musical, I will refuse to see. I can't with Pippin. Okay, so then um, she's like, oh my God, you're so bad, Anthony. And then she goes, well, you know, like the way that she is with me, like people like her, the only feasible way to like deal with them is to like reflect it back on them. So I'm going to reflect it back on her. And he goes, what does that mean? So then we, we're we back at Larsa's <laughs> and we hear ding dong, this and that, this and that, <laughs> this and that. X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. That's her ring cam. So she opens the door and there's a gift delivery. And she's like, oh my God, like Nicole sent me something. How random is that? To be honest, like it's so like truthfully, it's like so random. Yeah. So she, uh, she, it's in a box and she opens up the box and there's a mirror and the mirror has a, a message written on it that says mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fakest one of all? No, Lars is so dumb. She she can only pick out certain words. So she goes, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fake one? <laughs> she doesn't even read it right. <laughs> Who's the fake one? <laughs> Take and she, a and good you can look. See, and she, she just see her looking either, confused. She's trying to get just like the syllables that she can put together. She's like, <laughs> Take a good look. Like, who's the fake one? <laughs> She was like trying to figure out what the, the joke. She's like, I don't really get it, but Gertie gets it. She's like, oh my God. Oh my God. Listen, as someone who just played Charades Heads Up, I totally understand this reference. Sleeping Beauty. This is a Sleeping Beauty moment. Gertified. Gertified. No. She's, she's so no, funny. No, you got that one wrong. Because then Gertie comes in and reads it correctly, which is so funny. She's like, oh my God. Look at this. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fakest one of all? Take a good look. See yourself. It's you. You're uninvited to your own. You're, you're uninvited to my engagement party. And I was just like, wait, what? Where'd all those words come from? It's here. It's on the mirror. All I see is me. I look really pretty right now. Like, can I be honest? I look really good. I look really oh, yeah. good with words. I wish <laughs> words were more in right now. I'd wear them more. Wow. Oh my God, Gertie, this person in this in this plaque is like really into me. How do I give her like a $5 discount on my OnlyFans? <laughs> oh, so then Gertie's like, oh my gosh, Larsa, this is terrible. And Larsa's like, well, let's just see if they even get married. And then it cuts to Nicole, so proud of herself, saying, isn't that witty, Anthony? Like, see yourself? Get it? See yourself? It's a, it's a mirror? Like, it's a mirror, but it's like saying, see yourself away. But it's also because she reflects, but she also deflects. So she deflects into her reflection and then says, see, you see it, Anthony? He's like, yeah. Yeah. I, He's I, like, I, I got, got it. it. I got, got it. it. <laughs> so it's the day of the party. They've rented out some bank or something or I don't know. It's really yeah. nice wherever they rent it out. It's so nice. Yeah, it's beautiful. So everybody's getting dressed and, you know, so usual. Let's call each other while we're getting ready. So Nicole's, Nicole and Gertie are talking while they're getting made up. And Gertie's like, oh, my God, you better pick up. You better pick up because you look so pretty. But you know what? How could you even do this before your party? Because, like, I'm so in shock right now. Like, it was crazy because first I thought my husband was going to leave me because of what happened with Lisa. So then I have a charade tonight with my kids. That was crazy. Like, I have kids who don't know what the Little Mermaid is. I'm like, how could I even have kids like this? That's not gratified. Those aren't gratified children. And then this mirror that you sent to Larsa, what, what is that? What is that, girl? Girl, you yeah. better tell me. Like, if there's, like, a Little Mermaid... There's a big mermaid, and the big mermaid is this this situation here with the mirror. Okay, this is like shocking. Okay, what what was that about? You didn't even tell me. You had me sitting to this awkward ass moment. Like I'm like, what the fuck, you know? So Nicole's like, well, you know, I didn't, I purposely didn't tell you because then that I was going to uninvite her because I didn't want, I respect our friendship, and like I didn't want you to have to like sit there and know that well, I was going to be doing this. And she goes, oh, okay, okay, it makes sense now. Okay, now that you say it, I was like, what's going on? <laughs> and I was like, uh, I felt like I was a roadkill. Okay, am I like collateral damage in this whole thing? Like maybe she thinks I knew. Like it's swear to God, Gertie is all in a tizzy not because nicole did something really obnoxious she's in a tizzy because she didn't know nicole was going to do something obnoxious <laughs> yeah. and then was like am i on the outs but now that she finds out that everything is good she's like oh yeah cool okay great fun <laughs> fun gag 
uh, so Nicole's like, well, she is fake. She's fake head to toe. And so Gertie's like, oh, my God, Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Let us pray now. Let us pray. So then we go over to Larsa, and she's like, I'm so happy. I don't have to, like, burden myself. Like, honestly, I'm just going to spend time with, like, the people that I love, like. And then we just see her cleaning off dog piss stains off the couch. <laughs> So now we go to this event space. Nicole and Anthony arrive, and um, Nicole explains that the the theme for the party is because they met each other at the Wynn Resort in Vegas. That it's that they they found this old bank vault, vault, and the whole idea is like you hit the jackpot. So it's like money themed, um, and so Sorel shows up the her mom, and <laughs> Sorel is just like very funny. So she. Uh, Nicole offers her a drink of a signature cocktail. So I was like, okay. And she drinks. She's like, well, uh, like, what is, what's in your terrible signature cocktail? Mom, it's like tequila. Oh, uh, uh, like she's like not going to keep up the guys. So then uh, Julia comes and Nicole's like, oh yeah. So I uninvited Lars. So she's like, I am so glad you did this. You have to teach people and show them some things are not okay. Um, and I have news. Guess what I've wanted more than anything in the world? A potty trained goat. No. <laughs> um, a potty trained donkey. Yes, but no. <laughs> no. Potty trained chickens. I mean, I want all of these. Yes. Hey, we're adopting a baby, adopting a child. And so they cheer oh, and stuff. They're like, shoot, we thought you were going to say the kitchen timer for your fish okay so then uh kiki comes and she just gives like a hi to julie and julie is like hi and she's literally shady i love that half of julie's face is shaded during the scene and they didn't even like move her into the light and so she's just ignoring kiki which come on julia i like you but stop being mean yeah, I don't like that she is in a feud with Kiki. Because wow. like, I love Julia and I love Kiki and then I need them to be friends. And it's not so, fair because like, I know that everyone makes mistakes or whatever. But when I'm a fan of somebody, I get really upset when they do things wrong. When they do things yeah. I don't like. I'm like, come on, Julia. D- don't well, be I, like this. Well, the Kiki thing is also ridiculous because she basically went so hard at Kiki when everyone else has done equally terrible things to Julia. Like, I mean, Alexia was terrible to Julia. Okay. Alexia was literally terrible to Julia and Alexia was still invited to whatever. Well, it's not even about Julia. No one was mean to Julia. It was about, um, Adriana. Adriana. Yeah. Still. So, uh, Marisol's on the way and Alexia calls up and she's like, Oh, well, you know, Peter says your boobs look beautiful. She goes, thanks, babe. I did this for you. Titties for you. Titties for you. Ronnie, don't you love that word? Titties. Titties for you. So then Adriana's uh, coming with Thierry. She's like, I'm so excited for tonight, the party. I'll be, they're such a great couple. And Thierry's like, yeah, yes, they are. And she's like, oh, and so tonight, after we clear the air, it will be a good time. And she tells us that... <laughs> After all of this controversy that Larsa is trying to spread, or Marisol is trying to spread, she's like, so Thierry brought me a stamp certificate of divorce with a seal, and this is the proof that he is not married. Meanwhile, it's like written in like Zap Chancery font <laughs> with clip art all over it, like a little clip art old-timey <laughs> finger and like flying toasters. It's like, yeah, totally authentic. Did Carol from Lion King make this for you? Have you heard that <laughs> news about Lion King? No. Carol is saying that they've found her husband, that the feds oh, found her husband oh, alive in Costa Rica. <laughs> you, what I You say? mean, you said Carol from The Lion King, <laughs> as opposed to Carol from... Joe the Tiger the, Guy. Tig- What's it called? <laughs> tiger. Tiger Man. Uh, not ti- if it's not called Tiger King, Tiger... Tiger King. I think is it is. It tiger King? <laughs> Joe Tiger. <Exotic. laughs> <laughs> tiger tiger king yeah but like when you said when you said lion king i thought there was some gossip about the lion king show Carol, so I was, you're like, and I was like so i thought like it was a concept like oh we heard about this meme Car- like oh i'm carol from Car- lion king but when you're like oh did you hear about carol from lion king and then he said well carol said this i was like wait who's carol in lion king <laughs> sorry tiger king 
So Carol yes, from Matt found- says that they found her husband. Well, I don't think there's well, any proof says. of that. She's just saying that they found him, but I don't think there's any other proof than that, right? I haven't been able to find any. What say you? Dead or not? What happened dead. to Don? Don's dead, dead right? Don is dead. Yeah. Okay, Don, I is, thought so. Don is dead. I always have to excited. ask you, the world has just gone so fucking crazy. I don't know what's going on half the time. I read the news and then I come ask you about it. I'm like, is this real? This is world this is real? on fire, like a, like something on a gas stove. <laughs> anyway, Adriana and Terry. Oh, yeah, you'll get to my big gas, gas stove <laughs> yeah, freak like- out on Dwell Hello, episode 302. <laughs> I was literally, there was smoke literally coming out of my ear about gas stoves. After we recorded that episode yesterday, I had to have a moment with myself where I was like, Ronnie, what's really wrong? You know, <laughs> because you're too mad about gas stoves. And I don't even know what the controversy is. I don't even know why I'm mad. But I was really <laughs> upset. <laughs> Uh, Ronnie so, was on one about the gas stoves. I'll just so say that. Thank you, ben. So that's thank something you for being to look such a good to. friend. Thank you no, for being such a patient person. Because I was I know, like, I, who are you? It's just funny because Ronnie, Ronnie will often be like, look, guy, like Ben, let's just let's be entertaining. Let's not be political. And then you're like, all oh, these people with the gas stoves, <laughs> they want to ban the gas well it's not being political because i don't even know what the argument is i'm just just like you wake up and then suddenly everybody on your facebook and your twitter is like this is why you're furious today and we are furious about i'm like oh god now we're all supposed to be out there fucking marching for or against gas stoves what did what the gas stove do i'm just exhausted you know yeah. i'm just exhausted it's a lot it's a this lot. is the kind of anger i like housewives anger you know yeah like, did Adriana just Photoshop her you know, or Facetune? It's probably not. It's probably just like some Facetune document. <laughs> <laughs> it's a face. Oh, I like it. It was like ugly paper. So she Facetuned the paper. She, there was a wrinkle in the paper. <laughs> She's like, the so paper had too Mary. many little holes on the side. It's like, it was Epson dot matrix paper, wasn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So then we see uh, the dad, Mike, show up at the party, and he pulls up right next to a convertible, sh- you know, sh- with overflowing with gold balls or whatever. So he shows yeah. up, and he's like, what's going on? And, like, the dad is just shit-faced already. He comes yeah. in, he's talking on his phone, he's sun- in sunglasses, he's saying hi to people. He's like, just random people. And you know he's not talking to anybody on the phone either. He's like, no. yeah, yeah, deal, deal, deal. Hey, 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 good to see you. I'll be right with you in a minute. Ah, deal, deal, deal. Buddy, let's make some deals tonight, all right? After we yeah. party, buddy. Hey, yeah, I'll see you at the highlight game. All right, everyone. Where's my daughter? All right, yeah. Yeah, you know where my daughter gets all the talent from? Uh, I, she has it's from me. I go, ah! He just starts making this noise. He starts going, ah! And Kiki's watching him, and she's like, oh, yeah. Well, she gets her talent from the daddy. He goes, ah. I love it when you call me Papa. (laughs) And she's like, you want me to call you Papa? And then we go to commercial. And we come back and she's like, you want me to call you Papa? And he's like, yeah, you're beautiful. I like when you call me Papa. And she's like, seriously, Nicole's dad. Wow. But I like him. I like him. (laughs) (laughs) They are kindred spirits. She's like, he came in with Burger King. I liked him. <laughs> so then Marisol shows up. Marisol's wearing white. And she's like, oh, did you know it was black tie? I didn't know it was black tie. I was hoping it was going to be big titty as the theme. Because <laughs> I got them out for you, Alexia. And of course, she shows up to this uh, wedding event wearing white. Because she's Marisol. That's how she goes. Rolls. So the dad's like, you're here, Nicole. You're here. Oh, hey, bartender. What's up, Dave? How you doing, buddy? Want to make a deal later? Want to make a deal? And Nicole's like, oh, my God. Of course, my dad knows the bartenders. Jeez. <laughs> and the bartender's like, is this your dad? Is this your dad? I've known him for years. And she's like, yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, God. And, and so then we, he- see him, we see him tell the dad. He goes, listen, they turned off the spigot. But I'll bring you a vodka rocks. It's like Nicole. <laughs> Nicole told them not to serve him, and he's still like, "Don't worry, I got you, buddy." Yep, got him. So, uh, and Marisol's like, "I like him. He sort of looks like a lot of people I remember from the '80s." Okay, 
Uh, I mean, Nicole's dad is like two foot two, just like Nicole. And he has sunglasses on and sign. That's a typical drug dealer look. It's taking me back to my to old school Miami. I love his dedication to prop work with those glasses. From one prop artist to another, God bless. I love how much Mary Soul just loves Coke and, and the old Miami. She's just like, yeah, fuck yeah, I do Coke and get fucked up all the time. I live in Miami. I, like, she doesn't say it like, oh, God, typical drug dealer. She's like, oh, yeah, now that's a drug dealer look. I found a new best friend, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Takes her back. <laughs> yeah. So Nicole comes in for a hug for Mary Soul, and she's like, uh, oh, my God, it's so good to see you, Mary Soul. Like, what are you trying to steal my thunder? JK, only JK, okay? Yeah. And she's like, oh, my God, I would never try and steal your thunder. First of all, you'd have to have some titties. Got some titties. Yeah. And Nicole's like, um, hello, like, aren't there, like, rules of conduct? Like, black to a funeral, unless you're Lisa. Uh, I'm pretty sure Marisol's been married a few times. Uh, hasn't she worn white enough? <laughs> oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send her, like, a mirror tomorrow, but it'll have, like, a white border. And I'll be like, look at the white around there, but it's also you in your face. Oh, it'll be so good. Marisol's like, by the way, I saw your dad and the sunglasses inside. I'm going to have some drinks with that man. She goes, yeah, like, he, like, high fives with the bartender. I'm, like, mortified. She goes, yeah, that's my new buddy. All right, Bye. <laughs> You can send me a mirror anytime you want at a party, if you know what I'm saying. I know she goes to hang out with the dad. <laughs> so uh, Gritty shows up and everything, and then Johnny and Alexia show up. And then, um, uh, yeah, and then just people are showing up. Mike Mike shows up, or Mike is there. No, Mike is the dad. Mike's so the dad, Marisol, yeah, sorry. Marisol so, goes over to him, and she's like, hi. And he's like, uh, he's like, huh? And she goes, hi, I'm Marisol. I saw your sunglasses, and I said, that's the man I want to hang out with. You look like trouble. And he goes, always trouble. I like your shoes. <laughs> and then he's like, so what do you think about Nicole? She's amazing, huh? And Marisol goes, yeah, she's growing on me. She's grown on me. I was like, <laughs> how do you say that to someone's parent? They're grown on you. <laughs> And Alexi is immediately there, too, of course. So she's like, oh, we know Nicole is amazing, but what do you think of her fiancé, Anthony? Hmm? What do you think of that? What do you think of him? What do you think of Anthony? What and Mike takes of off his sunglasses very slowly and gives a scowl like, ugh, Anthony. But he goes, he's more than amazing. He's a gentleman and a scholar. <sighs> <sighs> So Alexi is like, I feel like Nicole needs to accept her dad because he's a lot of fun. And if she would just focus on the good things, maybe she could be happier. Like, maybe you should not tell people, like, with serious growing up trauma to just get the fuck over it. Yeah. Ma'am. Also, I know that your son's going around causing people the trauma, so I can understand your willingness to just get past anything and everything that happens to come up. But you're not really in the right this season ever. It's yeah. amazing. So um, now the women sort of all get, sit down on sofas because they're like, okay, we have to have a scene. So they all sit down and um, they're just like sort of joking a little bit. And then um, Alexia is saying, um, Alexia, well, I guess Marisol's joking that she, um, like, because she's dressed in white too, that Anthony's going to get drunk and marry her by accident. And Alexia is like, oh, well, you know, you can't do that twice because like, oh, well, you know, Marisol, Marisol and Steve are like, they're not even legally married. Like they went to Tulum because that's where everything on Bravo happened this season off camera. They went to Tulum and decided to have a spiritual wedding. And so they like function as like a husband and wife, except they're like not legally married. And they also don't spend any time with each other and maybe don't even like each other. So I think it's funny how she just tries to shoehorn that in like it's no big deal because, yeah, that was the thing last year. Everybody's like, Mary Soul's not married. There is no proof that Mary Soul got married again. She is solely doing this for storyline purposes, you know? Right. This is just like some gay that she knows that she enjoys being wasted with or whatever. That's the word en el calle, okay? That's all <laughs> I'm saying. So she's like, yeah, everybody knows it. It's not even real. So Marisol's like, well, I never got married here, you know. Like, I just don't want anyone to take the, the patent fortune. <laughs> Do you know how so, many magazines literally we're still sitting on? Oh, yeah. How can we <laughs> never hear about the magazines and stuff anymore? She's PR, right? Yeah. She was right. PR, and Alexia was the magazine. 
Alexia had, Alexia had the what was it called Venture Magazine or V Magazine or or Avenue Magazine. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, okay. It was for like, oh, this, you know, for this time, yeah, oh well, you know, magazine. So for Alexia the fall, network? I want to say like. Um, oh, well, you know, Peter in the fall, he likes to wear pants sometimes because they like, it's like the weather is like uh, colder. <laughs> Hello, this is Justine from the Alexia News Network. Uh, this is Justine in the magazine. Um, Peter has chosen to wear a sweater today. So if you see him, say, love the sweater, Peter. Thank you so much. Alexia <laughs> News Network out. So uh, Alexia goes, oh, no one has to take your fortune. You just need a prenup for that. And Julia's like, I don't have prenup. And they just all stare at her. And she's mm -hmm. like, yes, when we were getting married, everyone on Martina's team said, you are marrying Russian model? You need contract this, contract that. So she brings this contract to me. And I look and I say, oh, I cannot see. Oh, this contract. <laughs> What is this? Do you need me to take five hours it's going to take to go through this contract? And she said, never mind. And she threw it away. Like, <laughs> that, wow. <laughs> that is the best rebuttal to a prenup I've ever heard. Yeah, well done. I don't, you want me to waste five hours reading this? <laughs> As if there will not be a waste of many more hours down the line. I cannot so, see. I can't what? see. I can't, I can't see, see prenup. Oh, <laughs> fish steam in eyes. So um, that, now that dad's talking to Nicole, he's like, hey, I'm on my best behavior. Okay, huh? And, he, and she's like, you know, I'm like so happy that he like showed up, but that and that he like showed up alone. But like, we may be getting into the drunk zone, and that's like not what I want. So he's like, "All right, now I'm going to tell you a secret, and I never told you this before." Okay, one day Anthony's going to walk in the front door. It's going to be like eleven o'clock at night, and I'm not saying it's going to be like me, but he's going to come home and he's going right, to say, to "Dad, you, Dad, like, Dad, yeah. like, I don't want to have this conversation right now." Ah, I don't. it's a secret. I'm giving you a secret. <laughs> no, I don't want a secret, Dad. Oh, I don't want a secret, Dad. <laughs> okay, I love you then. Okay. What do you think his secret was? He's going to come in and he's going to say, I fucked somebody. And it's not that I don't love you. It's just I'm a man. And that's what men do. I think he's like trying to conflate his own failures yeah. as a father and put it on Anthony and being like, you would forgive Anthony, right? Yeah. Or he was probably going to say, here's the secret. He's going to come home at 11 a.m. and he's going to be tired and you just get down on your knees because that's all he really wants. And that's how you keep a man. Like he could be doing it the other way around of like. <laughs> oh, my no, God. Meaning, no, meaning like he's saying like if the secret to keeping your man around is to service oh. him. Right. Like I wouldn't have left if it had been that way around the other way around. Yeah. So I don't know, but like even the imaginary wait. things we put in his mouth are just so offensive, you know? <laughs> I know. I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying that. I'm saying. No, I, can I know. Imagine he would I'm, say that. I'm being grossed out by him saying that in my imagination. <laughs> my theoretical just version of him. Yeah, it's disgusting. He's a pig. So <laughs> then we go over to Gertie and uh, the girls, and she's like, "Well, I don't know if everybody knows this, but I played charades with my family, and it was so fun. They don't know what a Little Mermaid is. I don't know if I can be with the family <laughs> like that. But also, Lars is not coming tonight, and they're like, "What?" And then we see. <laughs> this show's favorite thing to do. Here's what happened two minutes ago. Lars are reading the mirror, going like, Mirror on wall. Who? Who? What? <laughs> and cuts back. And so uh, Mary Swell's like, Oh, so there's mystery about a box? What's going on here? And Nicole goes, Yeah, well, if you're going to come at me with ridiculous accusations, I'm going to reflect it back on you with a comical disinvitation because it's a reflection. <laughs> you do get it? I'm just like, no, you can't you don't get to do this anymore, okay? Because you don't get to make these reckless, wild claims to everyone in the group. It's not just me. Again, I just want to highlight it was a ridiculous and comical disinvitation. Okay. Again, does anyone understand the word play going on here? Because I've been saying reflection. So I sent her a mirror. Does anyone need any like need me to elaborate a little bit more? Because I can do that for you. So then we see the clips of Larsa just being shitty to everybody. She's like, yeah, 
Lisa, you know what's funny? Like, I was looking online, swear to God, and they were, like, saying you rent your house out every week to, to make your mortgage. Weird, right? God, swear to God. And then wow, Julia. To- Julia, someone said that you were making out with a man the other week. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that... <laughs> and then uh, cut to her telling Adriana, you're like bipolar, like, you're insecure, like, and that's it, like. And then that's cut to Nicole. Nicole. I heard you hooked up with every doctor in the hospital. That's just what I heard. <laughs> but the girls are all mad at Nicole, right? Because Alexia's like, mm. Like, Alexia literally looks down at her nose and just blinks when she's yeah. upset at people. So she's doing that. And Nicole's like, yeah, and you know what Larsa is? She's an arsonist. She likes to throw matches, you know, match, match, match. And then she'll see what catches. And I've not done anything to her. And Alexia goes, um, you said you had to check her before you let her into your house. So that's something you did. Right, girls? <laughs> right? <laughs> And Julia was like, well, I don't allow anyone in my house until I know who they are or if they are goats. So Nicole's like, uh, well, I like to know like people before I let them into my house. And that's like not uncommon. And Alexia goes, mm, well, I don't think you're very nice. And that's my opinion. That's just my opinion. I just don't think you're very nice. No, it's my opinion. And Nicole's like, but I did invite her to my house. She came for dinner. I didn't I didn't even have to Google you, you know? Like, you know how you have to Google the Kardashians are dating? No, you just find out. And that's the same with Larsa. Like, now I know she's dating Michael Jordan's son. Did I have to Google it? No, I didn't. So, like, I don't have to lie. But the thing is, she's, like, lying about me in a way that could affect my career, like, financially. By the way, bravo to the producers for being so quick to be like, oh, this Larsa Pippen news is breaking. We need to get an interview with Nicole right away to slip it into the next episode. Somehow, some way. So Alexia says in Spanish, where there's smoke, there's fire. And Nicole goes, I don't agree. And she goes, then, you know what? Just don't pay attention to her then. <laughs> like, Just treat her like she's like Linda Cardellini. Just like ignore her, you know? So um, Alexia is like, yeah, you know, it's just like, but it's silly disinviting people because if you don't want them there, then why would you invite them in the first place? So you could disinvite them. Are you new to this? <laughs> so, um, so Kiki is like, me personally, knowing Nicole, she doesn't give me that vibe. Like, who has time to sleep with the whole hospital? That's a lot. <laughs> a whole hospital. It's a big hospital. <laughs> Oh, gosh. So Nicole's like, Alexia, you can't just make up lies about people. And Alexia goes, then why does she do that? She goes, because that's what she does. She's like deflecting. And Alexia says, well, yeah, but everybody does that. We all deflect. And Marisol goes, yeah, we do. All of us deflect. God, get your head out the ass, Marisol, for fucking five seconds. Have your own thought process for five seconds. That's ten seconds. I do. But I'm just doubling down on, like, how much I want you to have five seconds of your own thoughts. I really like how when Nicole accuses Larsa of deflecting, that Alexia's response is to deflect about deflecting. Yeah. Like... (laughs) She literally is like, Larsa deflects. Well, we all deflect. It's like a mirror ball. <laughs> it's like a meta deflection. So then Nicole's like, but you know what, Mary Soul? I work for someone and there's a code of conduct. And I could lose my job for that dumbass accusation. And that's not true. Mary Soul, it's not true. Mary Soul's like, don't cry. Oh my God. Yeah, she's crying. Well, I'm sorry. It, like, it pisses me off. Like, I'm sorry, but it's not nice, Marisol. It's not nice. Marisol's like, well, I wish I had been uninvited to this engagement party. I mean, we argue all the time. This is crazy. Lars is the lucky one. (laughs) And Alexia's like, anyone can say whatever they want. She goes, yeah, but where do we draw the line, Alexia? (laughs) Yeah, Alexia, anyone can say whatever they want. (laughs) I'm sure if we go back to the footage, we can find so many instances of Alexia saying, I can't believe she's saying that, like, at my party. Like, this is like my my engagement. This is my wedding party. How could you be saying that at my wedding? How could you be saying that at my engagement party? How could you be saying this at, like, right in front of Frankie, you know? So then, yeah, Nicole's like, yeah, if the tables were turned, she would be pissed. And so Nicole just gets pissed and walks away. And she then she turns around to them and she goes, the day you guys work for something for 20 years and then some girl who's never worked for anything in her life tries to shit on it, then you can come talk to me. Okay. <laughs> yeah, she goes, then you're going to get pissed. And then Alexia, Alexia goes, yeah. <laughs> I guess to be continued. <laughs> I love Alexia being like, yeah. Like angry, angry agreement, you know? Yeah. Oh, so gosh. So that was it. 
What a show. Well, uh, brings us to the end of episode 10 of Mijami. I'm really happy because I told Ronnie before we started recording, I said, I am going to find a way to mention Linda Cardellini in this episode. And I almost forgot. And I found a way to really gracelessly inc- insert her name right there at the end there. So thank you, everyone. Thank you for giving me the space to do that. Uh, everybody, thanks so much for being here. Go get your tickets for our live shows over at watchwhatcrappens.com. Thanks to everybody on demand who's watching on video right now. Uh, come join us, patreon.com slash watchwhatcrappens. And have a great weekend. We'll talk to you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Allison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. Christy Wowardy Dowardy. Dana C. Dana Do. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. Ava Nagila Weber. Jamie, she has no less namey. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. You're never alone with Lacey Monteleone. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. Sarah Greenwood, she only uses her power for good. The Bay Area Betches. Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Better do what she says. It's Elva Enriquez. Can't have a meal without the Emily Sides. Undo your fasteners. It's Aaron Kastner. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. We will, we will. Joanna Rockland, you. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. She's a good hobby. It's Lauren Hobgood. We want to hang with Liz Lang, the incredible edible Matthew sisters, Nancy Cease and DeSisto. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee, it's Sarah Lemke. Shannon, out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watch Your Crappens ad-free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or... You can listen ad-free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at wondery.com survey.